Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting edition of Jeffrey Show Live. I'm your host, Jeffrey Taylor. Woo! And I'm here with AMT. And on today's edition of Jeffrey Show Live, you guys know that I'm not the one to gossip, but there's some things that's been happening out here. The phone is always going off. So without further ado, I'm going to kick it off with one of the biggest situations that happened here. It's Eminem released an album, a surprise album at that called Kamikaze. And if not enough, in true Eminem fashion, he was dissing artists. But not just rap artists like Drake, Lil Pump, Machine Gun Kelly, and a few more people that you may not know of. He also dissed the President of the United States, Donald Trump. But it gets bigger than that, you guys. He dissed Joe Budden. Joe Budden is currently still signed to Shady Records. That's drama in itself. But this disc came on Joe Budden's birthday. Yes, Eminem had the balls to diss someone on their birthday. It went nationwide. It's arguably going to be the number one album in America. But if it just keeps getting better, Joe Budden recently went to the Breakfast Club and he said that everything was cool on Eminem just the other day. So to his surprise, Eminem still throwing jabs after Joe Budden originally started started this by saying what we all thought revival was trashed by Eminem a few years ago but now Eminem got the last word at the moment and I quote M saying somebody tell Budden before I snap he better fasten it or have his body bag zip the closest thing he had to his is smacking you guys know the rest. Now, what I'm really hoping from this is that Eminem at least acknowledged that Revival wasn't the move and that him and Joe Budden could eventually have a sit down and that we could get future music from Joe Budden. This is a start, right? At least Eminem is responding. But we have plenty of more things to talk about on this end. We have Kanye West that recently went to the radio station and he apologized for the slavery comments. Now, his label mates and himself albums haven't did the best, so it's time to get the culture back. But this is the question I have for you guys. We had City Girls that recently made some homophobic remarks that resurfaced. We have Kanye West that recently said that slavery was a choice about a few months ago. But Kanye recently apologized. And and now people are still saying he's canceled. So my question is for the black community, for the culture itself, for anyone, when do you accept apologies? When are we just going to own up that someone made a mistake or are we just gonna continue to fault them? Like if someone can't apologize, then what can they do then? Kanye West recently apologized. I say we take that the heat. You know, have a close eye on him, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, somebody apologize. Let's acknowledge that. Moving forward, I want to say, without further ado, Queen Aretha, the Queen of Soul, rest in peace. Now, this funeral on the other end, it was, a, it, was, it was long. It wasn't a hot mess, but it was long. Let's be honest, it was one of the longest funerals in pop culture history. It was over eight hours long, but it had celebrities that included Jennifer Hudson, Stevie Wonder, Jennifer Lewis. We had Cicely Tyson, Tyler Perry. The list can go on and on from Fantasia taking off her shoes to a stunning performance. But it was Ariana Grande that got most of the headlines. One of the pastors thought that she was a new item on the Taco Bell menu, which just proves that even though Ariana Grande released a sweetener album that went number one, that she still can be humble within the black church. In a sense of that, we also had Ariana Grande that was allegedly, potentially inappropriately touched by the pastor as well. You guys saw the video. I'm even going to roll the clip for you guys. I've got to, I've got to apologize because I have to brush up my 28 year old daughter tells me, dad, you are old at 60. <laughs> when I saw Ariana Grande on the program, I thought that was a new something at Taco Bell. Oh <laughs> Girl, let me give you all your respect. <laughs> Did y'all enjoy this icon? She's an icon herself. But she was inappropriately touched, in my opinion. This created a huge conversation that it was okay. Do you guys think that it's okay? That it's okay to touch women in that manner? Like we all saw the clip. It seemed like he was touching one of her breasts. Unacceptable, unacceptable. I'm not having this, and I feel like more problems like this need to be brought to the light. I mean, it was broadcast nationally on television. Like we can't ignore this one. 
Move it along with a few more topics to wrap it up. Beyonce and Jay-Z had the On The Run 2 concert that was recent in Atlanta, and it just so happened that here in Hot Atlanta, someone decided to hop on the stage. Atlanta, we can't win for losing sometimes, but Beyonce and Jay-Z has made light of this situation, and now every show, they're going to look back and they're making gestures as if someone was on stage like they're in Kill Bill Volume 2. Now, it doesn't get any better than this, that the fans are purposely looking forward to what Beyonce and Jay-Z may do next. Now, I'm assuming that security has beefed up since the Atlanta show, but at the same time, some people, honestly, like Black Twitter, they're getting tired of it. Like, they think that it's starting to get kind of corny. So, at the next show, we're going to see if Beyonce and Jay-Z continue to act like a guest hopped on stage and behind him in a comedy manner. And in closing, one of the hottest trending topics right now is the queen of rap, in my opinion, Nicki Minaj. I hate to be biased, but easily she's making headlines with Freedom by Harriet Tubman. And the list can go on as these artists continue to bring up slavery. But at this time, Nicki Minaj was asked a recent question. What did she think about a Ladies Night remix? And her response was simply, she has no beef with anybody. They hate her. And I think that she's referring to Remy Ma, Cardi B, and Lil' Kim. So, if all three of them could co coincide, in a sense, with Nicki Minaj for a Lady Night's remix, that can be really historic and could be something really beautiful for the rap culture. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm going to get you guys later on another exciting edition of Jeffrey Show Live here on AMT.